Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Carol, and today I'm going to be taking you through a demonstration of MailLock, which is Beyond Encryption's secure outbound email solution. So the demonstration today is going to concentrate on using MailLock in an Outlook environment um, and utilizing our Outlook add-in and all the functionality that that brings. Now, that's not to say you can't also use MailLock if you are a Mac user or you're using a web-based email such as Gmail, etc. And um, we do have a tutorial on our website covering off sending an email via the web um, and all the features that that brings. And rest assured, the main features of the product, which are the encryption of that data and any attachments on that email, um, along with recipient verification are all still available to you and um, we also have a talk to us button on there so if you wanted a specific demonstration around that then please do request that and we'll be all too happy to do that for you but as i say today we're going to be looking at outlook sending a secure email solution um, and the outlook adding in play now from my many conversations that i have with um, advisors on a really regular basis and the demonstrations that i do i do know how important it is to you that this solution or any solution that you adopt for your business um, to secure your emails is really easy um, and frictionless for your clients to use. Um, we don't want to put any barriers up between um, your messages between you and your clients, obviously. So what I want to show you is not only the sending of a secure email using MailLock, but really importantly, the steps your client has to take to actually open that email and access that information. So we'll be looking um, at both the send and the receive journeys um, so you can see that in its entirety. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to somewhere that will be very familiar with you, um, I'm sure, your um, Outlook uh, email client. Um, and we, we will uh, we'll start the demonstration right there. Okay, so here we are, um, probably an all too familiar screen for you guys. It's your Outlook email client. And what you won't be familiar with, however, have you not already trialed um, the MailLock solution, is the blue button that's now appeared in the ribbon bar here, top left-hand corner, um, the MailLock icon. This will surface when you download and install that Outlook add-in. Um, and I think you can see it's a really nice um, visual. It's, a, it's really tightly integrated with your everyday uh, workflows when you're interacting with your email. It's sitting there right alongside that Compose normal email uh, button, and it's ready to be used whenever you need to apply that extra layer of security um, to those open messages that may contain or have attached to them that personally identifiable data. So I'm going to show you that in a second. But before we do that, I just want to show you how this add-in actually persists and continues to nudge you throughout your interactions with email. So as I say, the new Compose email button remains. Um, many of your emails during the day are going to be um, conversational. They're not going to require that extra layer of protection. So you would just compose a new email as, as per normal uh, procedure. But you will see then that when you select that button, that adding actually persists. Um, it turns red as a bit of a warning to say this email is now unsecure. Um, it's going out in the clear, if you like. Uh, but, you know, most of the time that's going to be absolutely fine. You can actually at this point toddle that blue should you suddenly change your mind at that point. Now, in a second, when I send a secure email, I'm actually going to send an investment statement. So just as a way of a demonstration here, of another feature. I'm just going to write the word investment statement in the subject line of this email here that we know is going out in the clear. So when you um, register for our mail lock trial, you will get access as the company administrator to the admin console. And um, this is where you invite all your users, etc. But it's also where you'll find a basket of uh, what we call trigger words, nudge words, if you like. Uh, these are pre-configured, but they can be, um, you can add words to that basket, to that library, you can take words away. So you can tailor those words to completely suit your business needs. And what happens is when you actually go to send your email, the system just stops you for a second and says, hold on, we've actually detected the word investment and statement um, in the subject line of this email. Are you sure that's OK to go and securely? And as I say, most of the time, it's going to be absolutely fine. Um, if you wanted to change your mind again at this point, though, you still can. So I just wanted to show you that to show you how this actually persists and continues to remind you, keeps these data security uh, standards front and foremost, good, good practices front and foremost in your mind. So we can take that down now. And what I want to show you now is um, sending a secure email to one of your clients using MailLock for the very first time. So we're going to use, as I say, the investment um, statement as an example of a document that obviously contains that, that data that we need to protect. So we know we're going to go here and select the Compose New Secure Email button. And obviously, that's going to remain blue. So as I say, this is for somebody who's never received a secure email from uh, using MailLock before. 
um, and we're going to use an investment statement as the example here. Okay, you would author your email exactly the same. There's nothing different here at all, obviously. Okay, and we'll just pop a, a dummy statement on there, but again, exactly how you would do that within normal email. And there we go. Okay, so what MailLock is going to do now when we when we hit this end button is it's going to encrypt um, anything contained within this email plus anything attached to this email and protect that from um, the interception of the, of the cyber criminal, protect that data from being intercepted um, and stolen uh, for criminal gains. But it's also going to um, address another risk that's actually the biggest cause of a data breach today, and that is an email sent to the wrong person. Um, the response times that we're expected to work to now, um, I, I could go on and on about all those pressures that we're under, etc. It's so easy to inadvertently quickly send an email to the wrong person. And obviously, um, that, that can have dire consequences if that data uh, is really personal and identifies uh, that particular individual and it's gone to the wrong person. So I'm going to hit the send button. And what you'll see MailLock do is it, the technology do, it will actually tell us that we've not actually verified this person. We've not sent them a MailLock secure email before. So we actually want to make sure this is the right person. So we can either set a question and answer challenge, um, or we can send an authentication code by a text message to their mobile phone. I'm going to use this one in a second because it's really common now. You, you, your clients will be really used to this type of verification from the banks, etc. Using a secondary device, a mobile device, is a really common and, and frequently used way now of actually verifying you are dealing with the right person. But just coming back to the question and answer one first of all, um, this can be anything as random as you like, and we do have some collateral on our Beyond Encryption website that can help you with this, some, some nice hints and tips around what you might want to ask your clients. It could be something you've picked up during your onboarding. It could be something that you just happen to know about the client because you've known them for some time. Um, and we've got some really nice examples um, of what you might want to ask there. But as I say, I'm going to use this authentication method today, and I'm just going to use my own mobile phone number. There we go. Just pop my number in there. I think we have most of our clients' mobile phone numbers on file now. Um, so you just pop the mobile phone number in there, and that's going to make sure that this investment statement is going to the person that this investment statement belongs to, if you like, that, that you have on file this mobile phone for. So we're going to send that away, and that's sending our message securely. Okay, now what I'm going to do now, um, because as I said right at the beginning of this, this webinar, I think it's really important for you to be fully informed uh, around the steps your clients need to take to actually open this email. So we're going to pop into a typical client receive environment, if you like. And for the purposes of this demonstration today, I'm going to use Gmail, uh, which tip, you know a lot of your clients will be using this sort of web mail um, environment for their, for their emails. So we'll pop over to that screen now and we'll go through um, what happens when this email lands in their, uh, in their inbox. Okay, so as I say, we're using Gmail today. It is very typically um, how your clients will, will be set up. Um, we can see that our investment statement has arrived here. Apologies for all those. There's been a few demonstrations today. There we go. So first thing I want to mention here is the branding that we have on this notification email that your clients will be exposed to. Now, this is just um, some branding that we've made up for our Beyond Encryption demos. But this is where your brand, your logo would appear. And obviously, it's really important that you actually apply this branding. Again, that's done in the admin console. But that really um, demonstrates your commitment to the protection of your client data. Um, and obviously, it gives your client the assurance that this email is indeed from yourself. So um, really encourage you to just pop into that admin console under the branding tab and just put your logo there front and center on those notification emails. So they asked to read my message. I'm going to hit that. And then they're asked for that code, which I'm just going to now pick up from my mobile phone, phone here that was sent to me earlier. Okay, and that number is 328. One eight. The message I received is the um, Beyond Encryption demo uh, email account has sent you a secure email using MailLock. Please use this numeric code to unlock it. So, you know, a really uh, nice message that goes out to your clients, you know, to say you've received an important email. 
we need to verify it's definitely you that's opening this email and here is the code to actually access that. So we simply put that code in there and submit. And there is our email with our attachment. And I always say at this point, that is as simple as it is to send and to receive um, a secure email using the MailLock technology. Your clients do not need to download any um software certainly they don't need to open any accounts register any accounts they can just meet the meet the verification which could be that answer to the question or the code sent to the mobile phone and the email will be made available to them okay i'm just going to open this attachment because i want to show you um the audit trail in a second so i just want to open that so that that will show on my audit trail okay that is the, the send and the receive journey, but, but MailLock has a really lovely feature as well in that your clients can also use the technology to reply to you with the same level of security. Okay, but when they go to hit this reply button, this is the point at which they'll be asked to register for an account with Beyond Encryption. Now, this is because they're coming onto the platform, they're using the software, we need them to sign up to a couple of fair usage TNCs, et cetera. You can see from the screen here, it's a really light touch um, registration form. We just need an email address, first name, second name, and a password for them to be able to, to access their Beyond Encryption basic account. This is a completely free account um, and really useful that they, I, I've spoken to many advisors who are, are getting quite concerned around the sensitive data that they're asking to be sent into their businesses from their clients. And MailLock is a way for your clients to be able to do that. Once you've sent them the email, you've opened up that um, that secure connection with yourself that they can actually use to send those documents back. Okay, so we're going to pop back now to the Outlook client, to your Outlook client, and we're going to just look what look at what happens the next time you send that same client um, a mail or email. And just to remind you again what that client's done, they have met the challenge, be that with a question and answer or the text message, in this case the text, the text code, and they have registered for that basic account. Okay, and we'll just now go and have a look at what the second journey looks like when they've taken those two steps. Okay, so we're back at the Outlook window, back with your hat on if you like, um, and we're going to send an email to that same client, a secondary email. Okay, so we're going to compose a new secure email. Now, I'm just going to put test on here because you've seen how it works. We don't need to um, attach anything in particular. Now, when I go to send this email, you're going to see a different message. That is because, as I say, this recipient has verified themselves already and they have opened that basic account in their reply function to you. So the system is now saying we've already verified this individual. They have already verified themselves to you. We know it's the right person. You don't actually have to set a challenge. And in a second, I'm going to show you why that is. Um, but this is where you can see the secure communication becoming really sort of, um, you know, really efficient um, because we don't have to set a challenge. You can set a challenge should you wish, and you might have a good reason why you want to set a challenge each time. But the point that I want to make here is that you don't actually have to. So we can just send that email away now without a challenge on. And we're going to go once again back again to that Gmail account and just see what happens um, at that end. Okay, so we're back in, in your client's Gmail. We can see that test email has been delivered. We've seen this before. Um, you've just seen this before. There's your branding, where your branding would go. Again, ask to read my message. But rather than now be set a challenge, have to meet a challenge that you set, because they've opened that basic account, they will verify themselves by quite simply signing in to that basic account with the password that they used when they registered. And they will be um, offered their email. There we go. And obviously, they can just reply to that email, uh, etc. So, I want to finally finish off finish off this demonstration by popping back um, to your Outlook client, to your own environment, and just look at a few of the audit features and uh, other features that are available, uh, just to finish off. Okay, so we are back um, in your Outlook. Uh, email client and I just want to finish off today by showing you a, co a couple more of the the system features. Um, if we go to our sent items now, you remember we sent this investment statement to our client um, earlier and if you go into your sent items, your secure emails and you just want to double click upon that email, obviously you know you will see this icon persist in telling us this email was sent securely but what we've also got now is a little drop down arrow which will show us our access details. It will surface our audit trail if you like for this particular particular email. So you're going to get a date and time stamped audit trailer when that email was opened. 
If you remember, we quickly opened up that investment statement. So it's telling us, yes, the attachment has been opened as well. The failed challenge attempt, your recipients will be allowed five attempts at the verification, identity verification challenge, at which point, um, if they don't meet that challenge, the email will be auto revote and they'll be asked to contact you. Obviously, that could be completely innocent um, and then they would contact you and you would have a discussion about that or that could, of course, be somebody trying to access that information that shouldn't be. And finally, the revolt button here is always a, a sort of um, well-received feature. And I think this is because at the end of the day, we are only human. Um, and quite often when we send um, an email to the wrong person, we realize we've done that. Um, you know, as soon, as soon as we've hit send almost, um, less, less than a second after we've hit that send button. So if you pop into your sent item and you hit this revolt button, when the person tries to open that email, they would simply be let, be met with a, with a screen that tells them this email has been revoked, please contact the sender. So a much more re, um, robust revolt function than not the normal Outlook recall where you're relying upon that person not to look at that information and to delete the email as instructed. This actually does um, completely um, retract that email. So um, it's, it's quite a nice feature that people seem to like. Okay, I do hope you like what you you like what you've seen today. I hope you like the, you know, how integrated this is, uh, that it's a really nice visual. And I really hope you like its simplicity, um, you know, how easy it is for you to send emails and how easy it is for your clients to actually receive those emails. Do head over to our website. There's uh, www.beyondencryption.com. There's lots of lovely collateral case studies um, on there for you to take a look at. There's also a talk to us button where you can request a, uh, request a trial, uh, request a demo of this for you and your team, uh, you know, a more, a more interactive experience where we can obviously ask questions as you go along, etc. And I would really encourage you to do that. So um, I would thank you for your time today and hope to be speaking to some of you soon.